Okay, so this is an enzyme lab. So we're gonna be studying the rate at which the enzyme works. The enzyme we're studying is cellobiase, otherwise known as beta-glucosidase. So we have a bottle of the enzyme here. We have a bottle of the substrate, so this is the reactant of the reaction. And then this little bottle is the bottle you're gonna actually have your reaction happen in. And these are things called cuvettes. So the reaction, once it happens, it produces a product that when you put it in the stop solution, it'll turn yellow. So here you see a series of tubes in which it's getting more and more yellow as time goes on. So this is kind of what your reaction will look like. As the product is being produced, you're gonna see more and more of this yellow color. So what we wanna do first of all is um, you're gonna have some practice in using micropipetters. So we're gonna use this micropipetter that measures between 100 and 1,000 microliters. So you can see here, this is set to 500 microliters. Um, this is another micropipette that you can see it's set to 500 microliters. Some of the micropipetters don't have a ones unit. So like for this one, do you see how there's only three digits? So this one is five, zero, there's a zero, but you can't see it because it doesn't have a ones place. So this would also be 500 microliters. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put 500 microliters of the stop solution into each one of these cuvettes. So you're gonna use a blue tip and you're gonna push down to the first stop. You're gonna put the tip in the liquid and you're gonna let it go. Let, go ahead and let it fill. So you, do, you don't wanna pull your tip out prematurely because it takes a little bit of time for the um, tip to fill. So just wait a second before you take it out. So I'm putting 500 microliters of the stop into each cuvette. The stop solution is a buffer that is at a very high pH. So when you put the reaction into it, it'll denature the enzyme and stop it. That's why it's called stop solution. Okay, so we wanna change tips um, always when you're changing solutions that you're gonna use. Um, so we're gonna use two milliliters of the substrate and one milliliter of the enzyme. Um, so we want to change this to be, actually, Paul, can you, do you have a phone? Can you put it on a timer? So, cause since my phone is the camera, I need a timer. Okay. So we're going to put, um, into the reaction vial, we're going to put two milliliters of the substrate, which is called PNPGP. So when you measure one milliliter, it, you really have to take your time in letting it fill because it takes quite a while to fill. If you pull it out too quickly, you'll just get air bubbles and you won't be measuring the full amount. And then make sure you're always putting the lids on the um, containers right when you're done with it so you don't get your lids all mixed up. Okay, so now we just put the substrate in. We want to change tips and we're gonna put one milliliter of enzyme. Once, as soon as I add the enzyme, we're gonna start the timer. So as soon as I add that one milliliter of enzyme in there, I'm gonna cap it, mix it, and I'm gonna have, have the timer going. And then um, every minute, I'm gonna take a half a milliliter out and stick it in the first cuvette, and then a minute later, I'll stick a half a milliliter in the second cuvette. So each of these cuvettes will be one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minutes. Okay, so I want to change this to, oh, it's going to be at one, one, that's a thousand microliters, that's one milliliter. I'm going to add the enzyme, one milliliter of enzyme, okay, so I'm going to add the enzyme, and can you start the timer? Okay, so it's going. I'm going to change tips and I'm going to change this down to 500 microliters. Because at one minute I'm going to add a 
500 microliters of this into there. So go ahead and tell me when it's a minute. So these are called time points. And actually, if you're um, concerned that it's gonna take you a long time to measure the amount, you can measure it a few seconds early because the reaction will still be going on in the tip. So can you let me know when I'm close? Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go, stop. Okay, so another thing you want to be looking at is the first time point is only one minute, so it isn't very yellow. Um, if by the time you do the second um, time point, if it's not very yellow, you might want to wait two minutes to do your third one. So it might go one, two, four, six, whatever. It doesn't actually matter what times you use. What you want is a range of yellow, right? So if it's not yellow on your second time point, then you want to wait more time, right? So that you get more product because the reaction will keep going. So we're going to see what happens at two minutes. And depending upon that, I might wait, another, I might wait, wait till four minutes to do my third one. Um, so then what we're going to be doing is measuring how yellow the product is with a spectrophotometer. So the spectrophotometer is just a way of visualizing, giving us a numerical value for the amount of yellow that it is. Okay, so that's my two minute. You can see that that's kind of kind of right where this one is. It should be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do it at three minutes. So it's very important that you're measuring accurately. I think that's why we're going to start out with you guys just measuring with these pipettes, just measuring water and weighing the water to make sure that you're measuring accurately. Because if you're not measuring with these pipetters accurately, then everything's going to be off. So we're going to do this to today in pairs or tomorrow. But um, then you're going to do it again singly because I want to make sure that each one of you is able to measure the rate because we should all have the same rate. Exactly, because we're using the exact same enzyme and the exact same substrate. So Eight, nine, go. Yeah, see, that's a nice medium yellow. All right, so I don't think you need to see the other two but um, what you'll do next is you're going to measure these are called this is called the standard curve so much like we used a standard curve before um, when we were oh when we were doing the dialysis membrane lab um, we're going to use a standard curve um, so these are known amounts of product so we're gonna use the spectrophotometer to read what the optical density is of the known amounts of product. And then we're gonna compare that to what we get to see how much product we have. So we'll measure all of, the, um, all of these in the spectrophotometer. And I'll show you how to use that. I'll go ahead and do this one now. Okay, yeah, see that's nice and, nice and yellow there. This one has to come back. This one gets a follow. They're actually gas. Yep, they're gas, and then something else has to go in and fix those gas. Because the IP is not gas. So um, while, I, while I have a little bit of time, the cuvette has a, a clear area here. And this side, this cuvette has an indentation. So we want to put the cuvette so that the flat, clear area is facing you. And the top of the cuvette, you can hold on to. But you don't actually want to put your fingers on this part because that's the part that the, the machine's going to be reading through. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add this one in and then um, we'll take the, take the things over to the spec and I'll show you how to use that. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Come follow me. We're going over here. There's a video on this in the school of That's very helpful. It's really great. Okay, so we're going to read first the standards. So this is the zero standard. So this we're going to use as a blank. So do you see where it says ready? Uh, actually, it says ready to read absorbance. But we're going to read the blank. 
Okay, and then we're going to hit this arrow for continue. So the blank is with a zero product. And then what you're going to do is you're going to measure these. You're going to say read sample. And you would write down these numbers. So these are going to be your standards. So um, the first standard, which is 12.5 uh, nanomoles per liter, um, is going to have an absorbance of 2.25. And then you're going to put the next one in, read sample. So again, these are your standards. And they should all be doubling. Um, which they are pretty much. Okay, I'm not gonna. So you'd read all the rest of those, but then you're gonna come in and read your samples, and you're just gonna write down these numbers again. So all you do is push read sample. Now um, absorbances, anything over 0.1 and below 1.5 are reasonable values. So like if, if I want to look at my highest, which is my five minute. That one is 0.473, which is totally fine. I could have probably gone a little bit longer at the end. I could have gone maybe like, instead of got going one, two, three, four, five, I could have probably gone one, two, four, six, eight. And it probably would have been fine because this is only not even a half of an OD. So you can decide to do that if you'd like when you do yours. Okay, that's it.